So great catching up with my next guest. It has been a while since we've done an interview, but he is coming off a really uh, big win. His team is, I should say, uh, getting the welterweight title over Leon Edwards. Of course, I'm talking to Lewis Taylor, the coach for Bilal Muhammad. Lewis, good to talk to you, man. How you been? I've been good. I've been good. We've been um, in great spirits. Um, it's been a long journey. Uh, so glad that Bilal was able to finally get UFC gold. Yeah, well-deserved. Um, tell me how life has been uh, since Bilal winning the title. I mean, I know you guys, uh, you know, went, uh, traveled after the fight and everything else. Uh, how, how's everything been since then and the reception that obviously Bilal had with, with winning the title? I mean, for me, I got the same wife, same kids, no big <laughs> difference. But, <laughs> but for him, it, it's been a um, very historic and epic moment. He just did the Chicago WGN. There's a lot of negativity clouds that sits around Chicago. So it's very motivating and inspiring to see positive uh, outlets, you know, welcome him and, and let him showcase what he's accomplished. And uh, more than that, we we did a parade for him out in Bridge, Bridgeview, Illinois. Uh, we did a parade in Manchester as well. And, uh, you know, the the ball keeps bouncing. Bilal didn't just win the fight. He, he dominated. Uh, I mean, I don't think there's any question. Uh, I think even people that, that had picked Bilal going into the fight felt like if he won, it wouldn't be that dominant. What did you think going in? Did you think it would be that one-sided? No, you know, the thing is, uh, I was very happy with uh, the game plan. The first time them two fought, I had caught COVID, and um, they, they kind of averted the game plan, and they kind of decided that... Um, we wouldn't press early the fight for Leon because it was a five round fight and it worked against us for, you know, historical purposes, how people kind of wrote Bilal off. And I try to tell them all the time. I'm like, bro, Bilal's a slow starter and we didn't, they didn't warm him up properly. And coming out the gates this time, coach Mike Valle, uh, uh, and, you know, led the charge and the game plan and he, we were all in. We, we you know, we were if we were going to be out of range, we were going to be completely out of range. And beyond that, we would the the game plan was to be in his face. And as you see, Bilal never let that striker breathe. Anything about Leon surprised you looking back on the fight that maybe you weren't expecting? Uh, kind of looking at how the the fight unfolded. Uh the, the 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 reversals and the back take was very uh good on Leon. At one point, he made me a little nervous because he was transitioning really well, really fast. When he um, went to the body lock, secured it, almost uh, secured the, the throat. And um, I was super nervous. I was like, defense? I, I could see him moving so fast. And Bilal was, for some reason, he was, he was, uh, his reactions were slow. And I was just getting more nervous. But then once Leon paused for something, I don't know what he uh, exactly held him up, but he hesitated. And that was just enough to let us get our defense and, and understand where we were in the fight. And from there, Bilal was a rock and uh, Leon couldn't get that, you know, get anything in. What does it mean to win the belt for Chicago and, and also your gym? You know, I think there was probably opportunities for both you and Bilal to, to go to and train at a bigger gym or, you know, go somewhere else. But this was a homegrown win. What, what does that mean to, to have that for, for your gym? I mean, uh, my gym is Chicago fighting. Bilal mainly trains out of Valley Flow striking. Mm -hmm. Um and as you know, we often will hit the road and go to maybe Fortis or Canada or Team Khabib, wherever they're at. You know, so he's constantly a student of the game and constantly trying to, you know, improve his fight IQ. And and uh, so it's never necessarily about where we're at. It's just about what are we doing? It's, it's been a super um, epic moment for me as a coach. Uh you know, I brought my PFL belt home, which, you know, at the time PFL was in its, its, its first year. And it was a very uh, touching moment to be able to bring my student, Bilal Muhammad, to my old address in uh, one of Chicago's, you know, most notorious neighborhoods, Englewood. And we took some photos in the hood and people were scared, you know, like, oh, are we going to be safe over there? You know, we're pulling up in Rolls Royces and Lamborghinis and, you know, and I'm like, bro, we're good out here. And then I just... The reception from, as you say, the hood was the best for me to, to, to have the hood see, 
UFC gold and PFL gold on their street and and just know that it's it it, it was being honored, you know, and celebrated and not just uh, pooped on as it usually is. It, that was probably one of the better moments of being in Chicago with Bilal with that UFC gold. Something else that I noticed during the fight, you wore those meta glasses. Was that a you decision or did the <laughs> UFC want you to wear those? I was curious about that. No, no, actually, um, that was oh, crap. event. Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm yeah, butchering their name. There was a team we were working with doing um, the videography and oh, they gotcha. had me put okay. those on. And, um, and then once the UFC saw the us with those on, they started putting out content. And I think it's going to be the wave of the future. Uh, it gives such a great sound bites and, and visuals and it's natural, you know, to, to just see it from that perspective. So the big question is, uh, you know, when is Bilal going to fight next? Um, as a coach, what would you like to see for him next? I mean, he should sit back and enjoy this time. It's been a long road to get this title. In fact, a lot of people felt like this should happen last year. Um, so when would you like to see him uh, get back in the cage? Uh, you know, this has been the longest. If you watch Bilal's career, the, the two year or year or whatever it was, plus spat that we had to wait from the Gilbert Burns fight until the Leon fight, that that was literally the longest layoff Bilal has ever had. And it made me nervous stepping up from such a long layoff into such a high caliber bout. But getting to your quite yep, the point, I think that we should fight November, December, it would be great. Okay. Interesting. So, I mean, that would be either New York or uh, Vegas. Um, is there like a preference? Because obviously New York would probably have the Jones fight. I think December, that's a fight he could maybe headline, right? You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of New York. I'm, I'm sorry that this is on public record, but, <laughs> no worries, it's fine. but, but New York, New York does too much at times. I, you know, I've been there when the commission has pulled people for chap lips and, and, and anything. I, it, New York is just, they're not MMA fans and, 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 you know, so it's, I don't want to go there, even though Madison square garden is a, is a great venue and it's New York, but if you're not loved and received well by the commissions and people like that, they, they make it very hard on the fighter to just do their job. So Vegas, I guess, would be more preferable for sure, and that gives you a little bit more time as well. And then the big question, I know we've been hearing two names as far as Bilal's next opponent, Kamar Usman or Shavkat Rachmanov. As a coach, what would you prefer? I mean, I would prefer no knees Usman. No. <laughs> but but no, no, no. Both of those guys are, are well-deserving, well-respected. Um, again, you go for the numbers game, it's Usman. You go for the legacy game or the taking someone's O would be Shafkat. Um And I think preferably you being this is Bilal's first pay-per-view you know, you want to lean one way over the other, but we're not going to duck and dodge and we're going to get both of these guys out of there. I don't think Usman's ready to fight, so it just might be Shafka, but that's not my decision. That's management's, you know, yeah. job. Yeah, no, no, completely understand. Um, is there like if, if you looked at a fight with Bilal and Usman, we'll start there first. Stylistically, obviously, Usman's got the wrestling. That would be kind of interesting from that perspective because Bilal's got really good wrestling as well. Bilal's striking's come a long way. How do you look at a fight between Bilal and Usman? I think um, I don't think Usman can shoot uh, anymore, not like he used to. So calling him a wrestler, I think he would just be using his wrestling as, you know, defense. I don't think he's going to be an offensive factor when it comes down to it. Um, but striking wise, he's going to stand there. He's going to bang. So it'll be interesting. But I also saw him hesitate against uh, Cosmod and not trust his gas tank. And against Bilal Muhammad, that's something you better have ready. Yeah, I agree. And what about, okay. about Shopkat? Yeah, we're going to go to the second Shopkat. one too because I'm curious. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shopkat, it, it, you, you know, again, gas tank is, is going to be a, a factor. Uh, and I think we, we, we beat him 3-2-4-1, you know? Yeah, I, I think it's uh, interesting as well, and also a bit of a layoff for Shavkat too, right? Because he uh, he's obviously waiting to see what happens, uh, you know, with with what's next and all that too. You know, um, I, I look at people like Shavkat. Shavkat's a finisher, and and he's good at it. But if you don't put Blau out of there, and he's still he's not he's like you know 
Jason Voorhees, he's going to keep coming. And that's the thing people don't understand. They say, oh, you know, no knockout power, da, da, da. But he hits hard enough to knock you out. And it's your curse that you're not going out. And that's why he punishes people. And um, I think that he's going to constantly be overlooked. I don't think people can overlook him the way they previously has. But I bet you no matter who the UFC puts in there, Blau's going to be the underdog. So keep the betters betting and keep making that money. Team Muhammad all day. What do you make of Ian Gary in the division? Obviously, he's getting up there with some of his wins. Uh, what, what have you made of his run so far? I, he was very smart in that last fight against MVP. I mean, he's he, you know he pulled a, a you know a feather one of the caps that we would do. People can hate and say, "Yo, you know why did he grapple?" It's it's smart fight IQ, and some people are coming down on wrestling in MMA. I'm like, that's retarded. It's a part of the sport. The name of the game is you know win first and first of all people want these fighters to go out there and play rock'em sock'em robot with their lives and careers but the minute they lose they don't care so ian it, he impressed me with his fight iq his fight intelligence his game plan so he is a threat and he's a big boy and the other name obviously in the division too i know he's injured right now but he's been making some noise as well as jack della madalena what have you made of his run uh, he finished gilbert burns in his last fight you know i don't know uh, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm a little shaky on that one, and um, I'll, 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 I'll hold my, my, re you know, my, my opinion to myself, okay. just because he, he, need, he needs to show a little more before I even waste time looking that way. Okay, fair enough. I like the honesty. Uh, your old division, uh, 185. Um, we obviously saw a really good title fight a few weeks ago between uh, Drikas Duplessis and Israel Adesanya. I was just curious. I'm sure you've seen the fight. What did you think of Drikas's performance? I mean, I think Drikas is a dog, and um. I wasn't impressed with either fighter and no disrespect to, you know, those guys, but there was a lot of sloppy everything in that fight, a lot of, um, you know, scratching your head. And if you're a competitor at the 185 pound weight class who can wrestle and who can, you know, strike, then you should be salivating at the mouth right now because that title is up in the air. I don't think Duplessis is really strong enough to hold the belt for long and I think that it's going to be based on these matchups how long he holds it. Do you think we'll ever see Bilal and Sean Strickland fight? There's a lot of bad blood there. I know Bilal has talked about maybe moving up. I know he just won the title but do you think that fight will ever happen? I, that is a 185 pound fight I welcome. Um, you know Sean has really took a you know, dump on Palestine, Palestinians and um, a lot of other people. I'm not going to go down that list. But when you see people in, Blau's not that guy who, who, who you know, really just, you know, you, you got to watch in the streets on a Masvidal tip. But when it comes to people like Sean, um, that powder keg can erupt at any time. And therefore, I'd rather it happens where we get paid for it in the cage. Absolutely. Well said. Um, you beat Abus Magomedov in PFL. I know it's a few years ago, but that is a win that has aged quite well. It was a big upset at the time. Um, what, do you, <laughs> what do you remember about that fight? Because was. I think people don't give you enough credit for that fight. It was It was an unbelievable performance. You, you know, um, again, people weren't paying attention to the PFL, like at least as much as they are now. And also the talent that's outside of the UFC still does not get the proper recognition you're nobody until you're in the ufc and then when you're out the ufc you're washed but you're you're only washed because the competition outside of the ufc is tough being in the ufc is the biggest platform but it doesn't mean that that's where all the greatest fighters are there are plenty of talented fighters outside the ufc that can manhandle a lot of the fighters inside and a boost i'm wishing him well he, you know, he's a tough guy. He just got to get his things together, his conditioning. But uh, technical wise, he, he's going to be a problem, you know, for a long time to come in the UFC. And I do foresee him making a title run if he can get his things together. Um, what did you end up doing with the money you won? You were a millionaire. <laughs> well, I didn't do much. Uh, just just bought a house, took care of the kids, took care of the wife. And um you know, uh, a million bucks isn't a lot of money, especially after Uncle Sam put his hand in his oh, in yeah. your pocket. Yeah. But um, but.
but good thing good thing is uh i i caught it at an older age so i didn't blow it i didn't go out and buy you know stupid things lamborghinis Rolls roses jewelry you know i didn't i didn't blow the money you know i invested well and um now i just need a couple more million so i can retire and uh, just last question, I know you're super busy. You were telling me even when we were trying to set this up before the fight that you know you got obviously have daughters, you have stuff going on. Uh, what is life looking like these days for you? Because I know you're a busy man. Right now it's slow. Um, I put off a lot of things until you know after the fight, uh, business uh, ventures. And so now it's just sit back, make some uh, financial moves. Um, it's good that everybody gets a break and uh could catch up on life but blau could actually take a vacation and um you know for me it's just enjoy the moments teaching my daughters how to drive and uh living vicariously through them lewis this was great good catching up with you man again congratulations on uh, on getting the title uh, for the team uh, if there's anything you want to mention before you get out of here like i always do i'll give you the last word uh, nothing much for me you know uh shytown stand up put the guns down it's me put the guns down taylor have a good day